Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the fifth round of World Cup Grand Final, sponsored by Elgato and brought to you by Victory Road. My name is Maver I'm here with my good friend Jamie Boyd. And Jamie, just like last match with all of that sun, things are heating up between these two teams. <laughs> Terrible, Maeve. Yes, <laughs> indeed they are. And yeah, we, we are 2 2 in, in this, in between Spain and Italy. So still entirely to, uh, everything to play for between these teams uh, final three matches it's going to go down to we could be crowning our champion the the game after this but yeah every game is going to be very important here especially when the teams are tied at the moment oh absolutely i'm fingers crossed right now for a game seven because i just even if it's you know even if i have to deal with costa casting that game seven you know <laughs> no i'm kidding but much love to costa it's his birthday i really can't make fun of him so but i'm you know i would absolutely be thrilled and i know especially the hype that the managers were giving yesterday uh for guillermo and davide to be able to play a game deciding game seven would it be absolutely awesome but if we jump over to the pairings right now for this fifth game we'll be able to see who we are bringing and this is a really great match jamie yeah just going to be two fantastic players uh, coming out for italy and spain leonardo bononomi versus eric rios uh, two very very strong players coming out of europe uh, in recent years and it's, this is definitely going to be a very very fun match between these two players we can have a look at how they've done so far throughout the tournament as well so you can see there leonardo and eric are still both undefeated maybe not playing as many games as some of the other players in this tournament but still being undefeated with a 5-0 and a 4-0 record is still very impressive yeah, absolutely. Both of these trainers as well. You can see Leonardo's kind of stuck with, uh, he's stuck with mostly the Xerneas and the uh, Zashin. He used a uh, a Calyrex Shadow Rider way back in the beginning of the first week of qualifiers. And then Eric has used four different uh, restricteds in each of the four weeks that he's played. So very excited to see exactly, you know, what these trainers are bringing and what they feel they're most comfortable with in this meta. Um, I think as well, Eric was part of that graphic where Sylveon was one of those uh, Pokemon that was only brought once and got a win i believe so some interesting team building as well especially with lunala one of the restricted that i absolutely love uh in this format that isn't as uh isn't as well isn't as playable i think as comparison to some of the others yeah, it's definitely interesting to see the teams that have come out from these players because you don't get as much information if you're preparing for this matchup in the finals. Usually you are going against someone who's played maybe seven or eight matches. Or you've only got five or four or five matches to be able to compare uh, your team building against if you are going to be going for a counter team uh, approach to this match. Uh, otherwise, you've got to just go, just go for a, Pokemon, a, t a team of Pokemon that you think are just going to be consistent against anything you can face. And going uh, looking at Eric's team, we are going to be seeing uh, six Pokemon that have been paired together before. The, inc the Incineroar, the with Xerneas, uh, Rillaboom, Yashifu, Amoongus, and the Entei. Uh, six Pokemon that we've seen pop up right at the beginning of the format. I, be I believe it's the same six that Paul Ruiz uh, brought to that uh, world, cha world Champion Invitational as well. So definitely a tried and true team coming up from Eric. Yeah, and if you're talking about Pokemon that have absolutely proven themselves in Series 10, this is a perfect top six list. You know, maybe Zashim would be another Pokemon that you really could swap in here as well. Eric, though, one of those players with absolutely incredible accolades from just the past few years alone. Top eight Oceania Internationals, top four Latin American Internationals, and then top eight of the World Championships in 2019. Uh, now, Jamie, did you end up playing Eric in World Championships 2019? I cannot remember. Uh, he would have been my opponent if I made it through the top 16. I did face uh, Alex Gomez, who was running the same team, and I managed to defeat Alex, but uh, yeah, not quite making it to Eric, and just b b getting to the top eight instead uh, with, with Eric and Alex. Really, really fantastic accomplishments coming out from Eric. And we can see his opponents, Leonardo, also has those fantastic accomplishments uh, to his name, maybe in more sl slightly more recent years, but yeah, Players' Cup runner-up in Players' Cup 3 and Players' Cup 4, a really, really fantastic showing for Leonardo. They're going to be bringing, again, six Pokemon that are very, very consistently brought together with the Caloric Shadow Rider, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Urshifu, Nihiligo, and Whimsicott. Yeah, and I think we've seen, you know, Nihiligo a bunch today. I, in comparison to Incineroar, Rillaboom, and Urshifu, which we always see a bunch, but Nihiligo, one of those picks that you can use to round out a team to really kind of deal with all of your matchups, especially if you're dealing with, you know, opposing Incineroar or even an Entei. You know, that Meteor Beam can be a move that can absolutely decimate a team as long as you can get it on either a switch in or land that move, because I will say this for forever, the fact that it's a two-turn move without 100% accuracy seriously hurts me. It did it just it pains me a little bit every time i have to click it 
Especially when you use up your item. If you're going for the one turn uh, charge up with the power herb and then the move misses. So at least you do get something with the special attack boost. Uh, that does stick around even if you do miss the meteor beam, as that is something. But yeah, be having that op uh, opportunity to miss, we have seen it already on the stream today uh, come, in come into play. Uh, so we'll have to see if that is going to be coming out uh, for, for this match as well. Because you would assume that the Nihiligo is going to be brought against a Xerneas team. It is going to be the main Pokemon that can break through that Xerneas uh, coming out for Leonardo's side the field you've got the whimsicott that could go for some taunts to stop it or go for the encores if it's got just gone for the geomancy that turn and ignore any rage powders that's coming out from the amoongus with the whimsicott because of its grass type uh, typing as well uh, maybe you just go for the cataract approach where you're just going for the astral barrages ignoring the rage powder from the amoongus because you've got the spread type attacks and just doing some big damage to the xerneas before it goes for the geomancy because you can always match effectively the speed boost coming out from the xerneas and it gets from the geomancy with your own tailwinds coming out from the whimsicott uh, so it's really going to come down how well this Xerneas can be supported. It's got some very good support Pokemon around it. It's got Pokemon that can keep it safe with the Rage Powder. You've got two Fake Outs as well that could be coming out. So you've got that Entei that could be Choice Scarf and could be going for those crunches to just to knock the, the Calyrex out immediately before it could go for an Astral Barrage. But Annihilego is probably going to be the main Pokemon you do need to be dealing with uh, coming out for the other side of the field. And that's really going to be just the Urshifu. Maybe a Stomping Tantrum from the Entei as well. but And also to an extent the Rillaboom. But that is threatened by the Sludge Bomb as well well uh, so you do need to be making uh, making use of the pokemon that can keep the xerneas safe if you've got the geomancy boost up before the sludge bomb hits it uh, it's not going to be taking as much damage and you'll be able to do respectable damage back to the nihiligo maybe put it in range of a grassy glide uh, from the rillaboom as well but nihiligo should be very crucial here in dealing with the xerneas I think one thing too that's important to mention is the importance of where these items are, right? If there's an Amoongus on the field, you want to kind of make sure you've got that safety goggles somewhere on your team that it can be well utilized. So we'll have to see if that comes into play in this game, though. Leonardo brings out Calyrex and Nihiligo for his lead, able to put some heavy offensive pressure right out of the gate. And then we're going to see the Rillaboom and the Amoongus here from Eric. So really interesting to see again, like, like, like I said, having the ability possibly to go for some spores early on or redirect something from that Nihiligo. Yeah, and you'll be able to go for a spore if you go for fake out into the Nile Ego and you're able to survive a psychic attack that comes out from the Cataract. You'll be able to survive an Astral Barrage for sure and be able to get the spore off, but it'd be very close if it's able to survive a, a psychic type attack, especially if it's a boosting item coming up from the Cataract. If it is that Focus Ash variety, the Amoongs could be able to survive and get the spore off, but otherwise you could just be going on the offensive with your Rillaboom. You could be getting the Grassy Glide damage down into the opposing Nile Ego, because if you get that extra damage done and you get the Geomancy off later in the game with the Xerneas, that Nile Ego should be in range of the Xerneas at that point and then maybe you're able to get a late game sweep going at this point so it's quite an interesting lead coming out from both these players Cataracts and Nihiligo makes a lot of sense let's try and deal with an immediate Xerneas lead especially into an opposing Amoongus because you can just bypass that redirection with the Cataracts as well and if you're leading with a fake out you've got to pick either stopping the Sludge Bomb from the Nihiligo or the Astral Barrage from the Cataracts uh, but it's not not catching the Xerneas on this lead instead and now the Cataracts is just going to be switching out into that Rillaboom yeah, Rillaboom switches in here, possibly to avoid something like a dark type, type attack here. Nihiligo goes for the Protect as well. Not going to want to deal with a fake out in this case. Rillaboom actually goes for a knockoff, which would have been a great dark type move into that uh, Calyrex. Knocks instead the Assault Vest off, while the Spore does not affect that Rillaboom due to its grass typing. So a nice switch in here to prevent you from losing that very important Calyrex right off the bat. Yeah, and ignoring the Nihiligo as well, that was a potential sludge bomb into the opposing Rillaboom. That would have done some very, very good damage. Uh, but being able to double target that Rillaboom, even though the Spore uh, did end up going into a Grass type and not a wasted Spore, it would have still been uh, wasted into the opposing Nihiligo as well because of that Protect. So uh, now the Nihiligo, it does have fake up pressure next to it, so it can effectively just ignore this Rillaboom this turn. Yeah, Rillaboom going to fake out the opposing Rillaboom. Nihiligo goes for a substitute here, Jamie. So a really interesting set to be able to let this Nihiligo sit out here on the field. And it's not going to work on a Spore either. Spore cannot go through that substitute. So a really nice way for Leonardo to put two Pokemon on the field that really don't have to worry too much about this Amoongus. Yeah, that's a massive tech coming out from the Nihiligo. Usually you don't have space for it. Uh, you do you just go for the Meteor Beam, Sludge Bomb, and Power Gem if you're opting for the Power Herb uh, Meteor Beam set. It's which move do you drop for, for having access to that substitute? It might be the Meteor Beam if you're not carrying the Power Herb on the Nihiligo, uh, but otherwise, dropping Power Gem means that once you've gone for that Meteor Beam, you're only left with Sludge Bomb as your offensive move, uh, which could put you in some awkward situations. So we'll have to see what kind of item this Nihiligo is carrying, whether that's still going to be the Power Herb on it as well. Uh, but that substitute, keeping it safe from the substitute, is really, really nice here. 
Yeah, Substitute, though, going to be dealing with that Grassy Glide damage, which is enough to knock it out and get rid of that, uh, that Substitute there. But it is going to take a Sludge Bomb for its troubles, do a ton of damage to this Rillaboom, and get the Poison as well on top of it all. So a really nice turn there, while the Rillaboom on Leonardo's side goes for that U-turn into the Rillaboom on Eric's side is enough for the knockout. So a nice double target, knowing that they don't really have to worry about whatever it is that that Amoongus can go for here, especially because that Amoongus can be really difficult to deal with if you don't have any sort of grass type or even a substitute to kind of deal with it though. Leonardo is going to be able to send in another Pokemon here. Could also be that uh, Calyrex that we saw really early on. Could be keeping that fourth Pokemon hidden for himself. Uh, just depends exactly on what he wants to keep here. But bringing that Calyrex in, knowing he doesn't have to deal with that knockoff anymore from the Rillaboom is going to be a really nice way to kind of deal with the rest of this team. Especially now that that fake out pressure is off the field from that... Uh, from the uh, Rillaboom, but instead now the Spore is able to go off onto that Calyrex, predicting that U-turn there. Absolutely huge to be able to put that Calyrex to sleep. Yeah, and now you get to bring in the Xerneas, just go for a Rage Powder and a Geomancy. There's nothing that can really stop that at this point. Uh, the Nihiligo just goes for a Substitute, then you've still got the Geomancy boost at that point, and then you can just go for a Moonblast and a Sport into that Nihiligo and take care of it uh, that way, because you won't be taking as much damage from the Sludge Bombs once you've got your Geomancy up, and you get to guarantee it now with the Amoongus. So, uh, really, really nice positioning for Eric there, catching the Calyrex on the switch in, and now means this Xerneas is pretty safe to go for its Geomancy. Yeah, Calyrex switches out here, brings out the Whimsicott, which could be really tough to deal with an Encore on that next turn, if that is something that you end up having to work around. Nihiligo goes for another substitute here. No Rage Powder coming out from this Amoongus just yet. Geomancy from the Xerneas will take that Power Herb as its hold, held item and absorb that to boost up this Geomancy just in this one turn and make the Xerneas become an absolute threat, getting that boost to its special attack, special defense, and speed stats. So kind of like an extra powerful Quiver Dance as we've been seeing with those Volcarona throughout the day, right? And of course, Xerneas really only runs Power Herb uh, Geomancy, but instead a Grass Knot to help get rid of the substitute, but Nihiligo is not a heavy Pokemon. It is enough. It is not enough to get rid of that substitute at all, so Nihiligo is still able to hang on to the field a little bit longer. Yeah, that was really strong plays coming out from both players there. Not going for the Rage Powder with the Amoongus, catching the substitute of the Nihiligo. But like you said, pretty light Pokemon. Even with the Grassy Terrain on the field, Amoongus not strong enough to break that substitute. But also switching into the Whimsicott this turn means you've caught the Xerneas with a potential Encore at this point that can't be redirected by the opposing Amoongus because of the grass, type, grass typing on the Whimsicott. Uh, so you can just go for the Encore, you can go for another substitute. Uh, you, didn't, you can just go on the offensive now because the substitute's up and uh, the support can't affect the, the Nihiligo at this point. Yeah, Protect, though, is going to uh, prevent that Encore from going off. Nihiligo will go for a Meteor Beam here is going to be able to charge up this move, get that plus one to that special attack. So it's showing that it is still holding that power herb, I believe. So it is going to be able to uh, show exactly what item it's carrying. And now we know at least that it is dropping one move, possibly that power gem, which would only, which could still be a bit of a problem here to do some damage. But Meteor Beam does go off here into the Amoongus, does over half of its HP. This Amoongus will eat its Citrus Berry that it is holding and gain back a bunch of that HP just to help it kind of deal a little bit more. And it's nice to see now that that Meteor Beam is off of the field in case something like an Incineroar comes in and can deal with it a little bit more comfortably. Another Grass Knot here should hopefully be able to take care of the Substitute, and it is. So now Nihiligo is out of Substitutes again, but will still be able to recover some HP from the grassy terrain on the field. And you still just get to go for the Encore at this point. You didn't switch out the Amoongus into a fake out Pokemon waiting in the back. Uh, if you had the Incineroar, that was an opportunity to go for the Protect and the, and the switch out. But even if you do that, then you leave the Nihiligo with its Substitute still up at this point. So it's still, still a very awkward position for Eric. Now going for the switch out into the Incineroar. So opting to deal with the Substitute first, uh, you can need a double Protect at this point to be able to stall out the potential of that Encore from the Whimsicott. Yeah, and I believe a double protect is exactly what Eric has gone for here as well. And he does get it, so an absolutely huge double protect to be able to go for that fake out on the next turn and prevent this Whimsicott from going for an Encore. Now that the Cernius is set up, you don't want to take it off the field. Nihili go free to go for another substitute and just sit on the field and be an absolute pain, especially if it wants to go for a Sludge Bomb on that next turn, knowing now that that Whimsicott isn't going to be able to uh, do much of anything, especially with that fake out. 
and so that's a very crucial double protect there. If you get Encored into the protect at that point, the Knightly Go just gets to focus down the Incineroar and the Moonga slot pretty freely for the entirety of the of the match at that point. And then you're just Encored and Xerneas once again at some point. Uh, so very crucial double protects. That gives Eric a fighting chance in this game at this point, because now you can fake out the Whimscot. Encore is not going to be able to happen into the Xerneas. You can just start going on the offensive with the Moonblast. You'll be able to take the Sludge Bomb a little bit better with the Geomancy, but because the Meteor Beam uh, was used uh, the previous turns, uh, you've still got a plus one special attack boost on the Nile Ego as well, so it'll still be doing some very good damage to the Xerneas. Yeah, Whimsicott goes for Protect here, not going to deal that fake out damage to it, but it is still not going to be able to go for anything this turn as it takes a Moonblast as well into that Protect slot, which means this Nihiligo is free to go for this Sludge Bomb into the Xerneas, does almost half of its HP, so if that's a damage roll, Jamie, that could be a two-hit knockout. Yeah, that's going to be very close. And you've got to factor in the Sludge Bomb Poison chance as well uh, that could happen. Even if the Xerneas is able to survive, you still could be getting that chance of the Poison, which would do the extra damage that would pick up the KO at that point. Uh, going for the Protect on the Whimscot, really, really nice here. Catching the Moonblast coming out from the Xerneas as well. Uh, if it was a Focus Sash on the Whimscot, you're preserving that from the Fake Out as well. Uh, so now you just get to go for another Encore or a Moonblast into the opposing Xerneas. Maybe just go for your own Tailwind at this point so that the Nihiligo is going to be able to outspeed the Xerneas as well. And once it's out, speeding you just get to click sludge one twice effectively at that point Whimsicott goes for the Tailwind here, going to allow this Nihiligo to be faster, especially now after that Geomancy speed boost. Nihiligo gets that Sludge Bomb off into the Xerneas slot, and that is enough for the knockout. So that was a tight roll there, I believe, but it is going to be able to take that Xerneas off of the field and make it so that uh, Nihiligo gets another boost. So it is now sitting at plus two behind a Substitute, and it is sitting in front of an Incineroar. Throat Chop, though, into the Substitute will do a pretty good chunk of damage, enough to fade that Substitute as well. So Nihiligo doesn't have a lot of HP to do you know many more substitutes and now that the Rillaboom is also off of the field here it means that this Nihiligo isn't going to be able to get that HP recovery but instead Amoongus comes back onto the field possibly to go for some more spores to Nihiligo but this Whimsicott's not going to worry too much about it. Yeah, not at all. And Snidego does have enough HP for one more substitute as well if it does want to go for it. But if it does do that and then you just take a Throat Chop and then a Spore, that will still go in, go to sleep at that uh, at the end of that turn. Whimsicott's not going to be able threatening too much into the opposing Amoongus or the Incineroar. Get some chip damage down into the opposing Incineroar with the Moonblast or the Dazzling Gleam that could come out. But switching out into this Rillaboom is going to get some Fake Out pressure back on the field. It is going to get some fake out pressure back on the field, but Eric did make a nice call here. I believe he clicked Flare Blitz into that slot, so even if he's able to get a Spore off here, he's going to be able to do a really nice chunk of damage to this Rillaboom on the switch in. Nihiligo goes for a Protect, though, so Nihiligo is not going to be taking any damage or any Spores this turn. Incineroar's Flare Blitz off next into this Rillaboom slot is enough to knock it out, actually, so a huge amount of damage, a nice uh, attack on that switch in for that Whimsicott, able to get rid of that Rillaboom that could be so detrimental to go for something like a fake out while pollen puff restores that hp that is lost from the recoil from that uh F flare blitz as well so a really nice turn not worrying about that nihiligo on this turn you don't know if it has power gem yet it hasn't revealed it yeah, so really, really strong play coming out from Eric there uh, for catching the protects of the Nihiligo really well, stopping any fake outs coming out the next turn uh, with the opposing Rillaboom as well. This Calyrex is still going to be sleeping from the earlier spores. So uh, yeah, really, really strong play from Eric to get back into this game. So now you've got your both your Pokemon and the Amoongus and the Incineroar are sitting very healthy at this point. They're both back at full health because of the recovery from both the Pollen Puff and the recovery from the Grassy Terrain. Uh, so sitting in a pretty comfortable position at this point. You get to just go for your Throat Drop into the Calyrex if you want to just pick up the out there you can go for the throat drop and the spore into the Nihiligo to try and catch any substitutes that it could be going for as well because it is sitting at two stages of increased special attack that's not going to be enough to pick up the knockout on either pokemon with just the sludge bomb but because you've got the substitute you're almost certainly not going to be having the the power gem i think we've seen all four moves at this point because it did reveal the protect as well so no power gem going to be able to come out from the Nihiligo the only attacks you can go for at this point that take one turn to do damage would be the sludge bomb and that's not going to be strong enough into either pokemon so even if you get that good damage down into the immune or the Incineroar. You can just follow up with the Throat Chop and you can follow up with the Spore as well. Yeah, Calyrex staying asleep for this turn. Nihiligo goes for that Sludge Bomb into the Incineroar slot, knowing that that's important. Not able to knock it out, though, while a Throat Chop into the Nihiligo is not enough to knock that out either, while Amoongus goes for the Spore onto the Nihiligo slot. So if Calyrex wakes up next turn, it could be a pretty detrimental piece, right? You have to hope that this Calyrex stays asleep for at least one more turn so that you can at least maybe get a Throat Chop and a Pollen Puff off, uh, get rid of that Calyrex, and maybe deal with that Nihiligo later. 
Yeah, and the Kyrex, is it, it, it might be enough to pick up the knockout on the Incineroar at this point if it does wake up with the Astral Barrage. it will be very close, but it doesn't indeed stay asleep this turn, so no Astral Barrage is coming out, and Nihiligo has to take the guaranteed turn of sleep. And now the Incineroar and Insamungus can do what it wants this turn. Yeah, and this throw chop's gonna be absolutely huge. Reveals this Calyrex is not holding that focus sash, most importantly. Calyrex now gonna get knocked out and off of the field before it was able to do any real damage. Amoongus goes for the Pollen Puff to its partner in Sinoror to give it a hand here and heal it back up uh, after, you know, taking a good chunk of damage from that Sludge Bomb from this Nihiligo. Nihiligo is gonna be possibly waking up next turn, but it's not gonna be able to take out both of these Pokemon. So whatever Leonardo has in the back, he's gonna have to deal with both of these Pokemon. Tailwind Peter's out, but both the Pokemon on Eric's side aren't really known as fast Pokemon so Whimsicott comes in here and is gonna possibly have to deal with the brunt of some some damage that it's not gonna love taking yeah, and you need, really need to be waking up with the Nihiligo at this point because uh, the Sludge Bomb it might still be enough to pick up the knockout on the Incineroar it'll be really close it would almost certainly be with a combination with the fairy type attack coming out from the Whimsicott as well I mean, you still just go for the Rage Powder if you want to keep the Incineroar safe and just get that Throat Chop into the opposing Nihiligo because the Incineroar is sitting pretty healthy there it won't be KO'd by just the Whimsicott and with the Nihiligo staying asleep here it's not able to get that really good damage with the Sludge Bomb an awesome Rage Powder, even though there is no wake up from that Nihiligo. Moonblast from the Whimsicott will still go into the Incineroar because it is not affected by that Rage Powder. Does get the special attack drop, which on an Incineroar does not matter whatsoever. Throw Chop into the Nihiligo will be enough to knock it out. So Eric really coming back here from a point where I thought he was in a little bit of a tougher spa, right? You don't look at an Incineroar and an Amoongus at the end game and think, oh, this will be enough for me to take out four Pokemon, right? So I think he's really shown how effective he can be with his targeting because this Whimsicott can still go for something like a Moonblast, but that should be the end of the game here, as long as, you know, there isn't any sort of weird shenanigans. But Incineroar can handle a Moonblast very comfortably. Uh, and, uh, Amoongus can also do the same thing. So a Flare Blitz here into this Whimsicott will be enough to knock it out as well. So Whimsicott now off the field, and that's going to put the first game for Eric Rios. A critical hit to boot, but and Rocky Helmet showing that that is the item as well. So nice bit of knowledge there, but that means you know that the Focus Sash isn't on the cat Rex or on the Whimsicott. Yeah, I would have considered forfeiting that previous turn if I was on Leonardo's side of the field because you do get that inf extra information given to your opponent with the Rocky Helmet as well. Uh, so yeah, it, it seemed like Leonardo had the momentum for pretty much all of the game until that Amoongus and Incineroar came on the field. Just, just being able to make a couple of really, really strong plays, catching the Rillaboom on the switch in with the Nihiligo going for the Protect as well. Uh, if you don't switch out into the Rillaboom and if you don't protect the Nihiligo, either of them, uh, you can just go on the offensive with the Sludge Bomb or just let a Pokemon get killed to get the Rillaboom in. Uh, so really, really really strong play catching that getting the pollen puff onto the incineral allows it to survive any of the attacks that my ligo want to go for it didn't have access to that power gem if it did uh, it did have access to the substitutes which were really crucial in the beginning of the game but uh, just showing how what a detriment it can be to not have access to that power gem uh, going into that late game if it did have power gem you get to go for power gem into the incineral that either KOs the incineral or forces the rage powder from the amoongus which means it's not going for sport or not going for pollen puff into this uh, into the side in, into the incineral as well so uh, it's a really really nice tech from the substitute especially into the opposing amoongus but not having power gem used up the Meteor being quite early, which would have been another way of hitting the Incineral for a knockout as well. Uh, just just let the game effect essentially slip away at that point. So the Nihiligo was sitting very comfortably, but maybe played a little bit too safe in that end game. Uh, kept switching into the Rillaboom and the Nihiligo. Uh, if that play goes through and the Rillaboom sits on the field uh, at the end of the turn, you're pretty much going to win that game at that point. You just get to go for Fake Out, you get to go for Sludge Bomb. You're probably going to have enough damage to break through the rest of the game. Uh, but being able to catch that switch in from Eric's side of the field with that Flare Bits, Flare Bits enough to pick up the knockout out on the Rillaboom as well. That's not often the case. Uh, some Rillabooms are able to survive that attack. Uh, being able to pick up the knockout on the Rillaboom not, and get the healing as well with the Pollen Puff. Uh, really, really crucial in the end game. Just a full HP Incineroar, full HP Amoongus. When you've got the Sleeping Calyrex, it was already dealt with. And the Nihiligo was low enough that it's it was able to be uh, dealt with with the Throat Chops as well from the opposing Incineroar. If you go for a substitute at that point, it could be caught out to a Throat Chop and a Spore going into it in that turn. So we'll have to see what adjustments are going to be made from both these players. It seemed like Leonardo had most of the momentum and just slipped away. Yeah, Leonardo keeping his same lead with that Nihiligo and Calyrex here, though. So if he has changes, it's going to have to be against this Entei and Amoongus. So Entei coming this turn for Eric is probably not going to be a Pokemon that wants to take a Meteor Beam, but probably feeling more comfortable now that there isn't a Power Gem on the field. Yeah, now we have to see if the Entei is going to be carrying the Choice Scarf as well. If it is, uh, it's going to be able to pick up a knockout onto the opposing Calyrex with a Crunch. It can pick up a knockout onto the opposing Nihiligo with a Stomping Tantrum as well. Uh, so... 
It's going to be a bit of a guessing game here of what this Entei is going to be doing. You've got to assume it is going to be the Choice Scarf because that is so common on Entei's that are paired up with the Xerneas because you do want to be outspeeding opposing Zashins. Uh, so if you do, if you have that Choice Scarf, you get to pick up a knockout if both Pokemon stay on the field and just go for an attack. But do you knock out the Calyrex with a Crunch? Uh, the, the Nightly Go would then be able to follow up with a KO with a Meteor Beam. But you'd at least be able to get a Spore into the opposing Entei. Uh, if you go for the Stomping Tentrum into the Nightly Go, that pick up the knockout there, but you, you take some huge damage through the Astral Barrage. And, and again, at least you'll be able to get a spore, uh, spore off unless it goes for the Psy Shock to KO. But at the same time, either of these Pokemon could be switching out to reposition here, especially if you're expecting one of the attacks, one of the super effective attacks into the opposing Pokemon. And a Whimsicott is going to be a really good switch in if Stomping Tantrum was clicked into that Nihiligo. Yeah, and Eric uh, making those moves with less than a second left uh, while the Amoongus here switches out for Incineroar on Eric's side. So Incineroar going to be able to put out more Dark type pressure as we saw with that, um, I believe, the Darkest Slayer and I, or Throw Chop, I'm sorry, just to be able to do some pretty strong damage. Calyrex going for a protect here, though. So Calyrex not going to want to deal with something like this crunch from this Entei. So a nice turn by Leonardo, knowing that he can switch and protect and not have to worry maybe about taking some super effective damage. And you can also go for the fake out into the Wimscot to stop the Tailwinds, which would allow the Entei to still be able to pick up the knockout onto the opposing Calyrex with a crunch as well. So a really, really strong positioning for Eric being able to get that Incinera on the field. A Wimscot would have been able to take the Stomping Tantrum quite well, and it's going to be able to take the crunch very well as well. And now that you know that it's almost certainly going to be locked into that move rather than a fire type attack at that point. Uh, but it's still open to the fake out that could come out, which would allow just that cr straight out crunch into the opposing Calyrex. But it's actually, no, not this turn. The Entei is going to be switching into the Amoon. Yeah, Amoongus comes back in here, possibly not wanting to deal uh, maybe with any of this shenanigans. While Calyrex also switches out, brings in the Nihiligo once more for Leonardo. So this fake out, if it goes into the Whimsicott, this is going to be a pretty neutral turn. Whimsicott instead, though, goes for Tailwind, so there is no fake out here on this turn instead. Instead, this Incineroar is going to go for a parting shot into that Nihiligo slot. So Nihiligo will lose that special attack, uh, get down to minus one, and allow for some more switching and maneuvering around. But I think a tough turn because you let that tailwind get up. And now the Nihiligo will be able to outspeed the Xerneas in the Entei, even if the uh, Entei is joining the fields. If it's got the Choice Scarf, you'll be able to outspeed and the Meteor Beam will put it back to neutral and be able to pick up the knockout in that case. You still got to contend with the Amoongus that could, could be going for the Rage Powders as well, though. It could still be going for the Spores to put the Nihiligo to the sleep uh, because it's going to be able to survive any attack that the Nihiligo would want to go for, especially with that earlier parting shot. Uh, with the Meteor Beam putting it back to neutral, that's not going to be strong enough to pick up the knockout onto the opposing Amoongus. So uh, still a bit of an awkward position. The Scott is going to be switching out, so not going to be able to make use of the Tailwind. So the Rillaboom is going to be joining the field. Uh, probably not the Pokemon you want to be switching in against an opposing Entei and Amoongus, though. Yeah, but if anything, you don't have to worry about more Rage Powders, right? So, and get some healing on the board, especially if you're going for something like a substitute once again with your Nihiligo. But Entei also switches out here for Eric. Eric is going to bring in his own Xerneas, which is not a Pokemon you typically want to put in front of a Nihiligo either, Jamie. So, interesting here to possibly go for something like that setup of that Geomancy and Rage Powder. Nihiligo goes for its own Protect, though. So, no damage coming out from the Nihiligo on this turn. Amoongus goes for the Spore. Doesn't affect the Rillaboom, so possibly was anticipating a switch into a different Pokemon because it wouldn't have affected the, uh, the Whimsicott either. Yeah, probably trying to catch that Calyrex that could have switched in at that point. A little bit of a missed opportunity for the Nihiligo hit. Could have gone for a substitute, could have gone for a sludge bomb into the opposing Xerneas that just switched in as well. Uh, so uh, now it's in a little bit of an awkward position where it's still sitting at minus one. Hasn't got its boost back with the Meteor Beam at this point. Moongus could very safely just go for the, the Rage Powder to keep it safe from the Xerneas. You've got to contend with a fake out at least for this turn. You could fake out the opposing Xerneas and go for the substitute with the Nihiligo. That's a pretty safe turn. There's not really too much that could punish that from the opposing Amoongus because we've seen the Grass Knot is not able to pick up the knockout on the Nihiligo substitute, even with that grassy terrain on the field. So that would be a very safe turn for Leonardo if they want to keep the Nihiligo on the field, even though it's at minus one. Yeah, but a much slower play here, sending that Amoongus back and bringing the Incineroar back out here, getting that fake out pressure once again. Another way to really help that Xerneas set up its Geomancy. Fake out, though, goes into the Xerneas here. Xerneas did not protect. Nihiligo goes for a substitute, so able to kind of set itself up once again into a position to maybe go for something like a Meteor Beam, but now you still have to contend with this substitute, right? And you still have this threat of Sludge Bomb or Meteor Beam onto either of these Pokemon. You should be outspeeding the Xerneas as well, especially with the Tailwinds that's been set. So the Sludge Bomb, even at minus one, it should still be doing some very good damage to the opposing Xerneas. And you don't need to worry about the Fake Out that can come out from the Incineral this turn. You do have to contend with the Parting Shots that can still bypass that Substitute and put that Xerneas even weaker at this point.
Yeah, Whimsicott switches in for the Rillaboom on Leonardo's side. So once again, we're really switching a lot around here. Incineroar also doing switches right out of the gate. Amoongus coming in as well. So, you know, all these Pokemon are still pretty much at full health here, Jamie. It's been a pretty low key set of turns, but Meteor Beam is going to do a ton of damage here. Able to get it back up to that neutral special attack now that it's sitting behind that substitute. If you're Eric, you're really hoping that this misses either one of your Pokemon, really, but at least you know that it is off the field. So now this Meteor Meteor Beam, though, could be doing a ton of damage onto either of these Pokemon, possibly into that Amoongus where that was that Incineroar. So a nice switch and have this Amoongus come in and tank that Meteor uh, Beam damage while also going for your own Geomancy. So great way to set up your own Geomancy and then maybe go for something like a Rage Powder next turn. Yeah, we'll keep the Whims the attorney safe from the Whimsicott's Encore, though. So even though you're going to be able to get the Geomancy up, we're in a very similar situation we were in in that previous game as well. Uh, you do need to be switching into your Incineroar to be able to get the Fake Out pressure onto the Whimsicott so you can stop those Encores from coming out. And now you know that the Meteor Beam has been used up from an early go. It's only going to be able to go for Sludge Bombs for the rest of the game at this point if it just wants to attack in one turn. So Incineroar is going to be able to take that pretty comfortably at this point. Amoongus has taken some reasonable chip damage, but it's going to recover almost all of that off with the Regenerator if it just switches out into the opposing Incineroar. So it's a very safe play of just switch into Incineroar and protect the Xerneas because the Meteor Beam is being used up at this point. There's not too much that can punish that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, now this uh, Whimsicott 2 could go for a Protect on the next turn as well and maybe deal with some more Encore shenanigans. But like you said, we're in a pretty similar scenario. Xerneas here going for that Protect, not going to want to deal with any damage or any Encore stuff from this Whimsicott. So Whimsicott able to uh, not work through this Protect. Nihiligo goes for another Ooh. Meteor Beam charging on a turn that is pretty safe, knowing that you're not going to be taking any damage as there is a Protect and a Switch in. So a nice call, I think here by Leonardo, especially because he's still stuck behind the substitute and Eric has to get around it. That's a really, really nice play coming up from Leonardo. So now you've got the, the one turn used up from the Nihiligo. go. You can't be stopped from a fake out. So you get to just go for the plus one Meteor Beam at this point into the opposing Incineroar that's just switched out into the Amoongus. That would still do some very good damage. It would still do some good damage to the opposing Xerneas as well. Whimsicott goes for a Protect here, so didn't go for that Encore, uh, interestingly enough, not wanting to deal with Fake Out damage, but the Moonblast will go into the Substitute here, which should definitely break that Substitute, even if it is not uh, very effective, just because of that Geomancy now allowing the Xerneas to do so much damage. But this Nihiligo going for this Meteor Beam will connect again into this Amoongus slot. We saw how much damage this did last time, so interesting to see exactly, you know, this Amoongus still able to kind of hang on here, eat its Citrus Berry, can switch back in and back out, possibly go for uh, some more dangerous uh, moves possibly later in this game. Yeah, it's a really nice item choice for the Amoongus as well. If it didn't have that Citrus Berry, the Nihiligo would definitely be able to pick up a knockout with the Sludge Bomb as well. And also a really risky play from Eric, switching out into that Amoongus. Could have got still been on cords with the Xerneas with the opposing Whimsicott, but calling the Protect coming out from the Whimsicott, uh, not, not going to be able to catch the Fake Out and the Moonblast that could have come out like we did see in that first game as well. Really nice play switching out into the Amoongus. Able to take the Meteor Beam very comfortably. Incineroar would have been KO'd to that attack if it did stay on the field. Uh, so now you're in a st still in an interesting position with the, with the Xerneas. You can't be Encored into Geomancy at this point. But even if you still get Encored into Moonblast at this point, uh, then that means that you can't be going for a Protect set anymore. And the Sludge Bomb would still be able to land into it. But at least going for the Tailwind means that Nihiligo can move before the Xerneas this turn. Oh, and getting that extra special attack boost from the Meteor Beam means it's almost enough to be able to take out that Amoongus with a Sludge Bomb. Uh, Moonblast being the only offensive move of choice on the Xerneas means it's only single target. Amoongus goes for a Spore, though. So after this Tailwind and having that Nihiligo move first, it is now put to sleep. And this Amoongus hanging on is absolutely crucial for Eric moving forward. Uh, being able to get the Spore into the Nihiligo, that frees up the Xerneas a lot here. Even if it's, it gets on court into Moonblast, that's all it needs for the rest of this game at this point. It's not concerned about the Whimsicott at all, because it's not click the Geomancy the previous turn. If it gets on court, doesn't matter. Not going to be able to take uh, too much damage from the Whimsicott's, uh, Whimsicott's Moonblast because of that special defense boost. And Nihiligo probably going to be in range of two Moonblasts at this point, uh, so it won't be able to make use of the Tailwind that was set up from the opposing Whimsicott. If you switch into the Calyrex, that's just going to be KO'd to the Moonblast. If you switch into the Rillaboom, that should be able to survive at least because uh, it does usually to be able to uh, EV to survive two uh, plus two Moonblast from the opposing Xerneas uh, but that's still going to take a huge amount of damage and switching into the Incineroar now just gets you fake out pressure as well. 
Yeah, fake out pressure, which can be absolutely huge for Pokemon like this Whimsicott, who could go for some moves like Moonblast. Not a ton of damage, of course. Uh, Nihiligo takes its guaranteed turn of sleep here as well. Uh, Xerneas goes for another Moonblast. This will go into that Nihiligo slot, which is so important for him to take care of. But that Nihiligo is still able to hang on. Not very effective move here. But, you know, you could go for a fake out, and that might be enough damage. Might not be, but it could be pretty close very close and even if it's not you still be able to get to a uh, guarantee that the Nihiligo is not moving this turn and Moonblast is definitely going to be able to pick up the knockout onto the opposing Whimsicott as well so really really strong position for Eric and the Whimsicott's not going to be taking the Moonblast it is going to be the Rillaboom switching in to be able to take that should be able to survive because most Assault Vest Rillabooms are able to survive that, that attack but that's going to be putting it just so low the Xerneas is pretty much free to go on a rampage now yeah, that Rillaboom had its Assault Vest knocked off by the Incineroar in that last game, but isn't going to have to worry about that this time. Amuga switches back in here for that Incineroar, so Incineroar not going for anything like a Fake Out, possibly into that Nihiligo. Uh, now that Nihiligo is, of course, slower, the Xerneas can get this Moonblast off into this Rillaboom slot, able to do a ton of damage, brings it down to the bottom, 25% of its HP, gets a Special Attack Drop, not too worried about it because it is a physical attacker. Nihiligo, though, does gain a little bit of that HP back, as well as Xerneas and Rillaboom, just thanks to this grassy terrain back on the field. Yeah, you get the Amoogus back on the field as well, so you could be rage powdering any sludge bombs that come out from the Night Ego, and also gives you the potential of even switching up the Amoogus once again to get more Regenerator, because that was a pretty pretty null turn coming out from Leonardo, not getting any damage onto the field, as so that's a free switch into the Amoogus that could switch out again to be able to get more more HP to re redirect in the future. But you can go for a fake out into the Xerneas this turn, and maybe the Night Ego wakes up and gets the sludge bomb into the opposing Xerneas. You could be going for the rage powder to guarantee the Xerneas stays safe for this turn, but opting for, to get to that Regenerator to recovery instead. Yeah, sending the Incineroar in instead of that Amoongus. Uh, that Amoongus still just under half HP, but it's coming in and out of this game so many times that it's kind of shuffled its HP amounts a bunch. Rillaboom going for the fake out, actually into the Incineroar slot to possibly stop something like a Rage Powder, but Nihiligo is asleep for one last turn. Xerneas goes for that Moonblast into the Nihiligo slot, will be able to take care of it on this turn. So getting rid of the biggest threat on Leonardo's team. So really huge for Eric to be able to capitalize on dealing with that Nihiligo and getting that really crucial spore for all of those turns. Yeah, it was, that was a very crucial survive from the Amoongus that previous turn when it did get that spore into the Nihiligo. Now that has been dealt with, there's really nothing that is going to be stopping the Xerneas at this point. You've got some priority Grassy Glide, sure, on the Rillaboom. That's not going to be doing too much damage with the Intimidates that's coming out from the Incineroar. You've got Fake Out Pressure active this turn. You can just go for a Fake Out into the opposing Rillaboom. Moonblast into the Calyrex with the Tailwind disappearing. You'll just be able to outspeed and KO that Calyrex with the plus two Moonblast at this point. We know it's not carrying the Focus Sash. Uh, so really, you just get to sweep through the rest of this game with the Xerneas. You just get Moonblast into any of the Pokemon that's remaining. All the Pokemon are now in plus two Moonblast range. You're not going to be outspeeding anymore with the with the, with the the Tailwind expiring. You need the Windscot back on the field to be able to set that up once again. But that's an, another turn that you're not going on the offensive with either Pokemon. And even if you do manage to get the attacks off, uh, the Rillaboom's not going to be doing too much damage with the Intimidate. The Calyrex isn't going to be doing too much damage with the special defense boost from the Geomancy. So it's pretty much just this, this Xerneas' this game to sweep through. Yeah, absolutely. Whimsicott switches in here for that Rillaboom. Calyrex goes for a Protect this turn instead. Maybe trying to catch a Protect here from this uh, from this Xerneas, but instead going to be a Moonblast able to knock out this Whimsicott in one hit with that plus two special attack thanks to its Geomancy. Incineroar goes for the Throw Chop. Not going to connect onto that Protected Calyrex slot, but this means that Leonardo's down to his last two Pokemon. There is no more switching. This means that this Calyrex is going to have to go for maybe a double Protect if it really wants to not take throat chop damage but eric looking to bring it to three two here for spain versus italy yeah it's going to be match point for spain going into the final two games at this point uh the xerneas just gets to click moonblast into either pokemon it'll get a ko if you fake out the xerneas uh, you get ko'd by either the flare but since the rillaboom or the throat chop into the calyrex leonardo knows that and eric is going to be taking this game 2-0 for spain so once again another 2-0 coming out uh, in these sets in this final and yeah that's going to put spain up 3-2 just need one more win to take the championship all these players are playing pretty aggressively, I think, Jamie, knowing how much is on the line for this Grand Finals. Absolutely incredible matches that we've been able to feature all day. Lots of different teams, a lot of different compositions and play styles. We've seen a lot of players go with a hyper-offensive team and still find ways to slow down their gameplay and make it a little bit tougher for the opponents. I know we took one game to timer today, and I think that might have been it. So interesting enough to see exactly how these players are working through what they need to do. And now, you know, we're at bare minimum 
minimum going to a game six. So <laughs> Italy is hoping next round that they can make it a game seven. So Jamie, I think that is it for me today, but we will be seeing you later on as well. So if everybody stays around, we'll be taking a quick break and then we'll be coming back for round six of the World Cup of Pokemon VGC sponsored by Elgato. Thank you.